All right, so I love tracking late night comedy, obviously also the decline of ratings for cable news, but what's happening on late night is basically the same thing. And the saddest segment I've ever seen aired a couple of days ago from Stephen Colbert. Let's put this up there on the screen. So they did an entire thing about what's your alias for the former POTUS, hashtag he who shall not be named. They came up with Sir Eats A Lot, uh-huh. Mayor McTreason, and kafefa fool. I mean, this is some of the most cringe stuff I've ever seen in my entire life. And I do think it does show... I really liked Colbert, you know, back in the Bush years. He, it was legitimately funny, a great Hilarious. satirist. Yeah. Um, and watching them all just get brain worms over the last several years, and then now just desperate in order to bring Trump back to the stage, in order to save, really, their failing medium. Like, now I understand why people like my friend Andrew Schultz are dominating on YouTube and Mm. other people who are getting Netflix specials or Rogan, Joe Rogan's podcast, and more, or every comedy podcast, the really good ones, they are booming in these times right now. And it's because corporate comedy like this, Jimmy Kimmel, uh, The Tonight Show, I don't even know who hosts it tonight. It's Jimmy Fallon, I think. Um, they, that guy has a show, apparently. <laughs> Conan, he, w- he was funny once upon a time, but yeah, he also got the brain great. worms. He probably still is the best one. I, I have to give it to him. But overall, you can see that the juice, that they were given a boon just like Cable. Four years, they were okay. The boomers were willing to tune in and laugh at Mayor McTreason. Um, Now he's gone, and they're like, what do we do? And Colbert is just like clinging to the last grasps of, of Trump, and they just won't let it go. I was reading a New York Times piece about this. Every single one of them did a segment or mentioned or did a joke about a Trump statement on the Kentucky Derby. Look, I thought it was funny, like, you know, whatever yeah. the statement was. But it just goes to show that they were doing it as a roundup to show his own relevance and his the way he maintains permanence for late night comedy. They need him, probably even more so than cable news. It's, it's really a disaster. It's kind of ironic because um, you, Trump certainly gave them a lot of material to work with. Yeah, and I mean, he so- was funny. You would have thought that this would be sort of like a golden age of comedy, Mm -hmm. but instead, in the same way that Trump broke, like, liberal resistance brains, he kind of broke comedians' brains, too. Colbert is really the saddest example to me because I loved that guy. The Colbert Show was brilliant. It was innovative. It was edgy. It challenged power. Remember the the, um, monologue he delivered at the White House Correspondents Dinner with George W. Bush? It's one of the best things ever ever done. That was incredible. Talk about having some stones. Like, to get up with the President of the United States right there and make the jokes that he did just completely filleting Bush for torture and for the Iraq war and all of that with him right there. Yeah, the joke about the gut, I was like, oh. Oh my, I mean, go back and watch. Talk. That was incredible. Yeah. So compare that courageous challenging of power to like Mayor McTreason. And it's very, it's very, sad. very sad indeed. And look, I get it. Biden, you know, he doesn't give you that much to work with because he just honestly doesn't say all that much or like come out and make a lot of public statements. But if you can dig a layer deeper, like, first of all, all comedy doesn't have to be centered around the president of the United States. There's a lot else going on in the culture that might be amusing to talk about. But they just, the the resistance sort of like appetite for the cringiest boomer Trump comedy. Mm -hmm. They're just trying to live off of that gold for as long as they possibly can. Yeah, 100%. All right, Tomorrow and Rising, Don Calloway, Emily Chichinsky, they're going to be here with us for Team Rising, plus friend of the show, author and research director at the American Liberties Project, Matt Stoller is going to be here. That's right. Huffington Post reporter Dan Marins can discuss the New York City mayoral race. Lots going on there. Remember to hit the subscribe button. You don't miss any of our videos. Don't forget to like and share as well, and we'll see you all tomorrow. Have a good one, guys.